Rick Steves produces television's most popular travel show, as well as writing guidebooks and running his Edmonds-based company, Europe Through the Back Door. Rick, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. We're talking about stretching the travel budget in these tight economic times. Right. And I don't know whether it's true in Europe as it is here in the U.S., but hotels have lots of empty rooms that they can't wait to fill. Is that still going on? Well. In Europe, there's always times when hotels are jam-packed and times when they're empty. And when they're jam-packed, they're going to charge the rack rate. And when they're empty, you can pretty much name your price. The trick is not to make reservations long in advance if you don't need to. If you book a room in Brussels long in advance, uh, you're going to pay $200 a night for it. If you walk up to the tourist office any day of the year almost, you can get a, a hotel for half that price if you let them sell you whatever business class hotel is on the push list. Do you think the global recession is having any impact? I mean, it, are rack rates a little bit lower? Uh, I don't think rack rates are, are much lower in Europe. There's a lot of tourism in Europe, um, you know, but there will be more empty rooms, and if people are willing to, to wheel and deal, they can probably talk the price down. I would just say, when we're thinking about tough times, it's important for Americans, of course, to, you know, know the budget tricks and not blow a lot of money, but also remember, your time is a precious commodity, and we have the shortest vacations in the rich world. And when you get a couple weeks off, you want to use them smartly. So you've got to use your time wisely as well as your expenses. Uh, I always find there's a lot of people wasting a lot of times in lines in Europe. And for me, there's, there's two IQs of European travelers, those who wait in lines and those who don't wait in lines. Mm. If, if there's no reason to spend two hours to wait in line to get in to see the Uffizi Gallery or some of the great museums in Europe. Buy advanced tickets. You can make reservations online ahead of time. So, you know, um, if you're accomplishing 50% more per day on a given amount of money, uh, it's it's a 50% better value without having to save money. You're experiencing more. Got and it. a lot of people have pretty lame experiences over there, and a lot of people have pretty magical experiences, not depending on how much they're spending, but on how smart they're traveling. Let's talk about one of my favorite parts of traveling, which is eating. Yes, me too. <laughs> one of the great pleasures of traveling. And, it, you know, you could eat at a five-star restaurant or you could eat at local produce markets. Yeah. Where in that range do you think is hit hardest by the conditions, the economic oh, conditions. I think the fancy restaurants are hit the hardest. Yeah. Uh, the market, you know, you mentioned the markets. I don't eat in the market, but I know um, in most cities, my favorite restaurants are near the markets. Mm. Think in Seattle around Pike Place Market. There's a lot of good restaurants nearby of all different categories all over Europe. If I think about every city that I love in Europe, my favorite restaurants would be close to the markets. I want to find a place that's, uh, that Hemingway did not eat at, you see. <laughs> I want to find a place where you don't have to rent a coat and a tie to eat there. I want I want to have a mom and pop place that specializes in local clientele, not tourists. I want them to be four or five blocks off the main drag, so their rent is a quarter what the fast food chains are paying on the, ma paying on the main drag. My t and I spend 120 days a year in Europe working on my guidebooks every night loving to check out all those restaurants. I just put them all in a row and I visit them all and I taste all that food and I end up eating at my favorite one every night. And what I find my very favorite restaurants are the ones that have um, a small handwritten menu mm. in the local language only. It's small because they don't buy a lot of stuff. They buy as much as they're going to serve fresh and not throw so stuff away. you have away. to ask them to translate, basically? And, and you have one uh, language because it is, uh, they're catering to the locals rather than the tourists. Tourists are more than welcome. And it is uh, handwritten because it changes every day according to what's fresh. I don't want to go to Paris and have French onion soup in the summer. Only a touristy restaurant would serve French onion soup in the summer because only tourists eat it in the summer. Only a touristy restaurant in Switzerland would serve fondue in the summer, cheese fondue, because that's a winter dish, you see. So you want to eat with the season. If they're serving fresh uh, porcini mushrooms, that's what you go with. If it's white asparagus, that's what you go with. If it's beer here, white wine there, red wine there, you've got to be kind of a chameleon and go with what the locals are going. You'll right. get a better value. Better value and also, I mean, it's fresher and, and, fresher and, and blend in more. And, and you, you're, you're, you're a temporary. <laughs> You're just a savvy traveler, and yes. I just love it when I go to a place where they're excited that I'm visiting them, rather than a place with a big neon sign that brags, we speak English and accept visa cards. <laughs> if I'm surrounded by a bunch of tourists, right. I'm kind of glum, and if I go to the place that's just thriving with happy locals eating, that's going to be a good meal. In the last minute that we have, any other tips you have for you know, generally stretching your dollar, saving money. Well, you know, my whole life has been uh, uh, collecting information and, and encouraging people to be their own tour guides. Uh, equip yourself with good information, expect it to work, and expect yourself to travel like an old pro, and you will. That's been my experience. Of course, mm -hmm. I write guidebooks about Europe, but whenever I travel anywhere in the world, I pick up a good guidebook, I expect it to work. It's a $20 tool 
for a $2,000 experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. That's a pretty good investment. It's, it pays you. for itself on the first day, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rick Steves.